Hello everyone, I'm Rhino Clavin with your Diz Daily Fix for Friday, December 22nd, 2017. Here is what's happening today. First up, Disney Cruise Line has announced a new offer that will allow guests to book a cruise and only pay half of the usual deposit. So that's pretty great. This offer is good on sailings that are seven nights or longer and take place take place between June 23rd, 2018 and May 31st, 2019. Um, there are a few restrictions, including suites, concierge, uh, concierge level rooms, and guaranteed categories being excluded from the offer. Um, also, the offer is only valid on cruises that don't require final payment at time of uh, booking. But uh, So the eligible cruises are um, voyages to Alaska, the Caribbean, the Bahamas, Europe, and Mexico. Um, I hear that Alaska cruise is pretty phenomenal. Um, but anyway, so take advantage of this offer. Book your seven-night or longer Disney Cruise Line vacation before February 25th. It, it gives you a little bit more of uh, leeway time there on affordability and payments and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, I just happen to know this uh, one travel agency that you could check out called Dreams Unlimited Travel. So if you go over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and agent can help you get started on booking your Disney cruise today. Um, now, next up, uh, I do apologize. This is kind of a slow news day. So next up, 10 Walt Disney World Resort restaurants will now be uh, begin accepting dining reservations on Open Table, which is an online uh, restaurant reservation system. Uh, so the uh, the participating restaurants are Gico, Kona Cafe, Olivia's, Big River Grill, Flying Fish, Grand Floridian, um, Boat Rights, The Wave, and Artist Point, and Sanaa. Um, I think that was all of them. But uh, a number of Disney Springs restaurants that aren't Disney owned and operated have been using Opal, uh, Open Table for some time now. Uh, I've never used it, but uh, apparently it, you can use it also at Disney's Vero Beach Resort. The uh, Wind and Waves Grill will also be available for booking. For, so for anybody who's going to Vero Beach. But um, so. Um, uh, it, it, it's not like a big change, but essentially the main difference between ape, uh, open table, I want to call it ape and table, open table and booking a traditional advanced dining reservation directly through Disney is that open table isn't going to charge you um, if you cancel the reservation. Um, and it doesn't ask for any credit card information. So for uh, people like myself who are super paranoid about that stuff, uh, it is uh, probably great. Um, so I plan on using it. Um, the booking window for this uh, service as well for open table is uh, you can only book out uh, for about a month, whereas through Disney, if you're staying, you can do 180 days, which, uh, but I don't know about you. Open table seems to work better for me since, uh, I'm more of a spur of the moment guy and not, what am I going to eat six months from now on a Tuesday? Uh, so that's just me. So check it out. Now, finally, um, ESPN's executive vice president uh, has some things to say about password sharing. Uh, digital content like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, uh, YouTube, uh, HBO Go, th the things you have to pay for, um, and other streaming services has become a large market for how people consume, uh, consume media. Now, oftentimes, friends and family share their password for the services, but now Justin Connolly, um, who is the executive vice president of ESPN and one of the main contenders for the role of uh, president of ESPN now that uh, John Skipper has... Uh, um, uh, step down, has said that password sharing should be considered piracy. Okay. So he said to Bloomberg, quote, it's people consuming something they haven't paid for. The more the practice is viewed with a shrug, the more it creates a dynamic where people believe it's acceptable and it's not, end quote. Now, to Justin, I say, get over yourself, all right? Uh, it's not piracy. If I want to take my Netflix password and give it to my mother um, so she can watch it, I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. That's not piracy. That's me sharing with a family member. Um, it's not like I'm posting it on the internet and all of a sudden 10,000, uh, a million people can use my account. That's not how it works. Only a certain number of people can be using it at the same time anyway. So if I'm watching TV up in my loft and Eli is watching TV in the bedroom, it's not always going to work because too many things are signed in at once. Um, so it doesn't work like that. How about you make a restriction? Um, and the thing is too, is if I'm sharing it with my mom, like maybe my mom's going to pay for Hulu while I pay for Netflix. And now I have another streaming service seeing their content that I wasn't getting before. So if anything, it allows for people to reach further than they would normally. So I honestly, I, I, I just think maybe he's a little butt hurt that, uh, ESPN has just been on this constant spiral downward and, no one wants your streaming service, so get over yourself. Um, now, I do apologize if I'm offending anybody out there who maybe has ESPN or, you know, agrees or whatever, but it's a, it's just, it's not a black and white issue, and I hate people that uh, 
think like that, especially, uh, I just, I'm curious how he feels about net neutrality because I have a guess how he feels, but I'm not going to get into it. We're just going to move on. Um, so over on the Diz today, our featured article comes from Genevieve Peltier called Hot Diggity Dog, Universal City Walk's Hot Dog Hall of Fame, where she gives you the full rundown on the baseball-themed dining location. So check out that article and many other great ones on www.info.com. Now, trending on the theme parks, attractions, and strategies forum today is a thread entitled Letting Go of AP? Question um, mark. That was started by poster The Real Teal. In the thread, the poster asks if others have chosen not to renew their Walt Disney Annual Pass and why. Lots of folks are jumping in with their reasoning, such as not enough trips planned and high upfront costs for non-Florida residents. If you're pondering the same question, stop by the thread on disboards.com and see what others are thinking and add your own thoughts. Now, finally, everyone's favorite part of the show, the weather. Out in Anaheim, your weather over the next four days is looking pretty consistent with highs just around 70 and lows tonight around 40, but it'll rise around to the mid-40s over the next couple of days. Uh, Here in Orlando, the next few days is staying just around 80 for the high and just over 60 for the lows. Now, as of now, the forecast for Christmas Day is a high of 73. Yesterday was 70. I'm just hoping it doesn't hit 80. I'm just hoping a little bit of cooler weather on Christmas is not too much to ask for. I just want to wear pants and not feel like a disgusting, sweaty mess that I am. And that's it. That's that's all I'm saying. So for links to everything that was discussed in today's Diz Daily Fix, you can visit the Daily Fix main page at www.info.com slash Daily Fix. Now that's going to do it for me today. The Daily Fix will be returning after Christmas. Um... Definitely Wednesday, maybe Tuesday. I don't know yet. Um, But uh, I celebrate Christmas, so I'm just going to say Merry Christmas to everyone out there who does celebrate Christmas. But whatever holiday you do celebrate, happy holidays. I hope it's the best one that it can be. Um, So like I said, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye. (laughs) 